Here's a very first look at Google Anti-Gravity, which is a new agentic coding system from Google. And with this, they are really trying to redefine how software engineering is supposed to be done in the era of coding agents. It's very different from other coding systems that we have seen. It's their full-fledged first IDE that runs locally. And think of this as a junior software developer that you can plan with. It helps you execute that plan while you are in full control. I had early access to anti-gravity. So in this video, I'm going to show you what the different capabilities are and how to get started. Now, this is not the first coding agent. There is Gemini CLI, which is a CLI based coding agent from Google. Then there is Jules, which is an asynchronous coding agent that runs in the cloud. And then there is even Firebase Studio, which is a full fledged coding IDE that runs in the cloud. But anti-gravity is the first full fledged coding IDE built by Google that you can run locally. Now this is very different than a normal coding IDE. And the main power is here. It's supposed to be a multi-agent coding system. So you can run multiple different projects in parallel. And if you go to your inbox, this is where you get updates from all the different tasks that are being executed. I have had access to this for more than a week. So I've been really testing this. At the moment, there is one task running. If you click on it, you're going to see what exactly the coding agent is doing. And then there is also a built-in browser, which really sets it apart from other coding systems that we have seen so far. So within this, the agent can click, scroll, type, and navigate web pages. Essentially, this is something like Playwright or the Chrome Dev Tool based system built directly into the browser. Now, apart from the agent manager screen, you can also click on open editor, and this should look very familiar. So this is a clone of VS code, where if you click on the right hand side, you can actually see a coding agent that you can interact with. Now, if you click here, this is going to open up a chat session that we can interact with the agent. So I'm calling this Nano Banana, the project. We're going to build a simple app. And through that, I will show you a number of different features. For agent, you have two different models, Gemini 3 Pro Preview and Gemini 2.5 Pro. There is also planning and fast mode. In planning, the agent can plan before executing tasks. Use this for deep research, complex tasks, and especially when you're starting your project. For fast, this is where the agent is supposed to do the actual execution. So let's assign it a simple task and then I'm going to show you different features that are available here. So I want to use Nano Banana to create a text to image app. So we're going to start off with something simple. Create a web app where the user can input a text and then the app is going to use Gemini Nano Banana model to create images. Use the REST API. For every request, it's supposed to generate four different images. Do not use any SDK for this. Also add the ability for the user to download any selected image and regenerate those as well. Make sure the UI is modern, functional, but minimalist. Put everything in a single HTML file. Give the user the ability to provide the API key but make sure that you don't expose that API key. It needs to be hidden. Okay, so I am actually happy with the transcription. We're going to just send this in. Now, here's where the actual magic happens. So right now, it's thinking through the problem. It did two different things. First, it created a list of tasks. So the first step was to do research and create an implementation MD file. Then it thought about what the implementation is going to look like. And then there's going to be a manual verification step. Now here's the detailed implementation plan. And this is really getting inspiration from real software development. So the plan is to build this app. We specifically mentioned to use the Nano Banana or Gemini 2.5 flash model. And then it thinks about that the API key will be stored in the memory for the session. It will not be stored save to the local storage. That is one of our requirement. Now, the beauty is that you can do a review of the plan and add comments here. 
you can just go through this. I actually like the plan, but let's say I am going to add a few comments for the agent. So for example, I'm going to say generate two images, not four. And this is just to show you that you can add comments here. And then the agent is going to modify its plan based on the comments that you provide. I'm going to add one more comment. Also add the ability for the user to select one of the images. And then the user can request subsequent changes to that image. Okay, so this is another comment that we add. Now we're going to just review that. We're going to submit the review and the agent is going to modify the plan based on the comments that we add. Okay, so you can actually see now that it's updated two parallel requests instead of four. So this seems good to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to just proceed. Now here's the fun part. If you go back to the main agent session or agent settings, you can actually see everything that the model is doing in that session. And you can switch between different sessions. So for example, this is another project that I'm working on currently, right? So I can ask the agent to do something here and it's going to run these in parallel. For example, here's a project that I was working on. Now I can add comments right in here without even going to the main IDE. Okay, so I see this error in the front end. Can you fix this and rerun? And this is pretty awesome because you can run multiple agents at the same time. Now, while this is building, I want to also show you a very neat feature and that is this knowledge. So if you go here, it basically creates a knowledge of the different stuff that it has done, the different problems that it has encountered and how it fixed those problems. And it really builds this over time, which is pretty great. Okay, if we go to our messages, our inbox, you can see that right now, it's working on two different projects. It seems like there is an update to this. So we're going to just go here and now we can open this. Okay, so here's the app that it created. Okay, so I'm going to provide my API key and we're going to provide an input. Create an image of a llama wearing sunglasses. All right, let's click generate and it failed. Okay, so we see a number of different errors. Now I can copy this, but here's another thing that you can do. I encountered a few errors. Can you open the index.html file in the browser? I have copied a Gemini API key in the .env file. Use that API key and test the app yourself and fix all the errors. Okay, we're going to send this in. Now the very first thing it does is that it opens a new browser and now it's going to test everything. And you can actually see the test that it's running, which is pretty awesome, right? You could have done this when, uh, with an MCP server, uh, but here there's a native browser, which gives the agent a lot more control. Now on the back end, you can actually see that it's taking a screenshot of what exactly happened. It is also a playback of the actions that it has taken. I'm going to show that to you later in the video. And this is really the first time that you can assign tasks to an agent and let it run for a long horizon. Because now with a tool like a browser, the agent can directly test things without the need for yet another external server or MCP tools. Okay, so it seems like it was able to fix the issue, which is pretty neat. And the test is running completely automated. While it's using the browser, you're going to see this green outline, which is pretty awesome. Okay, and with each one of them, you have the ability to either download or regenerate. You can actually click on try to regenerate this image. Okay, so it seems like it's actually running some tests right now, and it encountered yet another error. And really in the background, it's running these tests completely autonomously. Okay, but we can do one more thing, and that is going to be create yet another task for the model. I don't really like the UI. We need it to be a lot more futuristic, make it modern, come up with a few design ideas before we proceed and show me some mocks. Okay, we're going to send this in. So this is yet another task that is running in parallel. And while that is happening, the model is still testing the app. Okay, for the second task, so I think using Nano Banana to create these different mocks. So you can actually see here's one, Here's another one. Here's yet another one. 
I like this more than the other ones that it has done so far. Okay, and as I was saying, while it does its work, it creates a small video for the testing that it does and changes that it makes. So you can go back and look at some of the previews in the IDE, which is pretty neat, right? So you could potentially run a task code 9 in order to make sure that it's actually done. You can go back and review these. So some really awesome stuff. Now, the good news is that even though Gemini 3 Pro is the best model out there, they are not limiting this only to Google or Gemini models. According to the team behind Antigravity, they are going to open up the possibility of supporting models from other providers. So you could potentially use another coding beast from something like Claude or OpenAI, which is pretty amazing and very new for a company like Google. Now, there are a whole bunch of other features which will probably require a completely separate video. But do let me know if you're interested in learning more about anti-gravity. Okay. Now, I have been building something special with this. I have been building a fully local text-based video editor with it for the last few days. And it has been an absolute blast. So you can actually use it for some real hardcore work. So for example, I can just select a piece of text. So I'll walk you through the process, but let me show you a very complex software that I have been building with this. So this is a full text-based video editor, very similar to something like Descript. And it is running entirely using local models. Now here's what we can do. You can just click on remove filler words. So it will identify all the filler words. They will be removed completely. Now there are other features. Let's say we select a piece of text. We can add captions to it. And now if I play this, you're going to see captions, right? You can also do targeted edits. So for example, I can select and then hit delete. That segment is gone. You can also add features like zoom in and zoom out, right? So it's a fully functional web app that I created entirely using anti-gravity. And this multi-agent coding framework that they have built is extremely useful for this. It also lets you add effects like drawing on the video, which is pretty awesome. Now, if you're interested in this or my voice to text transcription app, details are going to be in the video description. Now, anti-gravity is an extremely powerful platform. These are early days, but still I have had a blast over the last week or so. According to the team behind it, it's going to be available to everyone. There are going to be different tiers. More of that information is going to be available in the blog post. I will add some of that. So this was a very quick walkthrough of this new anti-gravity agentic coding framework from Google. Let me know what you think about it and how your experience with this looks like. Also, do let me know if you're interested. I will create some comparison videos with other coding agents out there. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.